What is up you guys? So in this one, I'm going to talk to you about data modeling in Redis with Redis own for Python. So you might be familiar with how to model data in SQL. There's plenty of books on how to model data in a relational database. And you may even be familiar with data modeling in other NoSQL databases such as Mongo. Today I want to tell you how to approach modeling data in Redis, which is a NoSQL database as well. The first thing or the way that I approach data modeling in Redis is to first list the questions that I need to answer and rank them by their importance. So whereas with traditional databases, you might think first about your specific data schema and you're trying to create a more normalized data schema well in NoSQL, you want to take a different approach you kind of reverse the way you think about things so you think about it application first what questions do i need to answer and then you figure out what queries are needed to answer those questions and when you're determining what queries you need you want to think about do i need to favor reads or writes for a specific query and in general, does my application need a lot of reads? And do I need to focus on read performance? And then finally, you want to map the entities and relationships and so on. Um, for read performance, you obviously want to minimize the number of queries you need to answer a specific question. Now, one advantage that Redis has is it operates in memory so round trips to the database, you know, general queries are a lot faster. And Redis, you know, could do millions of queries per second. So you don't really have to rely too much on only having one query, but for your business logic and from an application perspective, it's nicer to have simplified queries rather than, you know, having to make a bunch of round trips and do any looping in your application and that sort of thing. So let's consider a retail application. You know, think of any big box retail store that might have a digital experience. You can look at products, purchase products, go and pick them up in the store, etc. Now, the approach that I would take in the retail to model data in a retail application, first, the questions that I'm going to tackle today, there are obviously several questions and we can get into a very complicated discussion on building out a retail application, right? I'm going to try to keep things light, but I do want to give you enough deep details so you can gain an understanding for how you might model the data and approach a retail application. So the questions that we're answering today are what products are available. If I'm going to your website, you know, I want to be able to see a list of products and then dive into each product and understand more about it and maybe even purchase it. Ideally, you'd want the client to purchase it, right? The next thing is where can I purchase a specific product? So imagine you're like a Home Depot or something like that, that has multiple stores in a city. If I'm looking on your online site, I want to go purchase a product and I don't want to wait for it to ship to me. I can just go pick it up in the store. I might want to know where I can purchase this product. So what stores have inventory? And if there is one nearby, then I'll just go pick it up. The other question is, what is the average rating for a product? So when I'm browsing your store, I want to, you know, know the ratings of products. If I'm trying to compare one brand against another, I want to know how they stack up from user reviews. So you've probably seen this on any e-commerce website, such as Amazon. I mean, they have all sorts of reviews and ratings. So from these three questions, I've determined three queries that we need to make. One is getting products and product, the details of a product and getting stores that have products in stock that will help us know, Hey, can I go to a local store and just pick it up? Um, and getting reviews for a product. And the other thing to think about in this retail application, and most you know, digital applications that heavily favor reads over writes. Um, that's not always the case, but they heavily 
favor reads over writes. It writes in this case, so we want to minimize the number of queries and maximize our read performance. So how can we model a one-to-one -one relationship? What even is a one-to-one -one relationship in the context of our retail application? Here's an example of a list view and a detailed view of products in, you know, a typical e-commerce store. You might be familiar, you might know exactly what this is. Um, here in the list view, you can see three products. You see the title of the product, some a little bit of information, some aggregate data about the reviews. And then in the detail view, there is actually a, a lot more data. So you can, where you only see one image, here you can see all of the images. Here maybe there is even a video or a bit of more description. You can see the ratings and then just more details and more in-depth um, detail and pricing on the product. Now this looks like there is a product that has a high level of fields. Then when you dive in, there is a further detail that you need to be aware of once you're actually looking at the product, right? I'm talking about the keys here. So in order to optimize performance, you might not necessarily want to get all of the information about a certain product. That is, you really don't care about the reviews and the details, but you do want some of the details of the product. So in a traditional database, you might be familiar with this entity diagram. You might come up with a product table and a product details table. In NoSQL, you might call those documents or collections. So you may have a products collection and a product details collection. It's very similar to SQL with a couple caveats. In this relationship here, you'll see images are a list of strings. You can't really have that in SQL, so you would actually have to have an additional table. So in the normalized relational database structure, you actually end up with three tables. You have the product document or table, the details document, and the image document. So this is like the fully normalized scenario. Now a note here is that this isn't ideal for NoSQL because you can imagine if you want to get a single product, then you have to get the product, then you have to get the details, and then you have to get the image, and you have to join them together in your code before returning them. So you can go with a slightly better example, given that we're using NoSQL. And so with Redis JSON, in general, you can nest documents. So Redis JSON allows you to nest documents. And here, the simplest example is just nesting images. So why did we just nest them instead of keeping them separate? This way, we just make one query for the details and we can return all the images on them. So if you look back at the detail view, every time we look at the detail view, we want to know all the images, so this is a perfectly viable query to make. But when looking at the list view, we don't necessarily need all these details. So that's where this view is pretty good for our scenario. Another thing to note here is images is just a list of strings here. And this works well if you have a bounded list. What that means is you know the maximum size of the list. So in our case, we're saying a product is only ever going to have up to five images. And because of that, it's very easy to nest it in here. And we don't have to worry too much about it. So the other way you can look at this is the fully embedded pattern. Given that this is no SQL and we're in Redis JSON, we can have a single document that contains all of the information. So you can model a one-to-one -one relationship by just embedding everything if you need to. And actually with Redis search, you can return only specific keys that you care about. So this is actually a perfectly viable way to set up your documents. And then you don't need to get details if you don't want them at that time. Okay, so let's think about one-to-many relationships. You've seen one-to-one, -one, you've seen one-to-one -one using normalized pattern and the embedded pattern. With one-to-many relationships, let's consider reviews. So every product has reviews. When you're looking at the list of products, you can see an aggregate view of the reviews. So you'll see there are 1,410 reviews and it looks like, you know, four and a half stars on average. When you're looking at the detail, you get a lot more detail about the reviews. You can actually see all the comments that people have made. You can see some more in-depth aggregate information about the reviews, etc. We're going to 
simplify this a little bit, but let's consider what it might look like. So in a fully normalized database, you would have a review document that might only contain a reference to the product and some information that's specific to the review. And this way, every time you go and, you know, you get reviews, you know, if you're looking at a product, you need to join reviews and then return the data. And you would have to do the same with NoSQL. You would go and get the product, then you would go and get the review. You would join the data together and you would return it. So let's look at the embedded pattern. Given that this is no SQL, you can just embed reviews as a list directly onto a product, but consider for a moment that you know some products might get thousands, even millions of free views, right? You don't really have a bounded list here. When you have an unbounded list, meaning you don't really know the size it's going to be, it's probably better to separate that out into its own collection and its own set of documents with references back to your product or to your parent. And then you can use what's called the subset pattern. So over here on the right, we have a subset pattern, right? And what I've done here is we actually have two different documents. We have our product document here, and then we have our review documents, which are all for this product. There could be, you know, thousands of these, but what we do is we keep track of recent reviews. So maybe we keep the last 10 reviews on, right? In our product, and that way we can always show the 10 reviews very quickly. And then as you scroll on the front end, or, you know, if it's paginated, if you go to the next page, that's when we start loading from the review documents. So we can still have a very fast first query and then each subsequent query is also fast. The other thing to consider when you have a one-to-many relationship is if you want to have any pre-computed properties. So this is a great way of not having to constantly run aggregate queries. So if you're used to SQL, you can think of, you know, running a group by and then doing a distinct or an average or a sum or things like that. With NoSQL and with Redis JSON, you can compute some properties as you go along and that way you can save computation later. So in this case, you'll see, I'll go back to the review aggregate here. You'll see that we can see the number of reviews and we can see the average review here. We want to capture that and we do that with the review count and the rating sum. So as we add new reviews to the list, we go to the product and we take a note of, hey, there is a new review count and we add the sum of the rating to the product. You can always recompute this if you need to. And in fact, this can be kind of a something that happens in the background that doesn't slow down your application for your user, right? So when they add a review, you can go and do this in the background and they can continue working and doing whatever they need to. So the performance on incrementing this isn't that important. But when you're getting a product, you want to, you know, if you have a list of products, you don't want to have to go into all of the reviews for each product and do an aggregate query that is going to get really slow. So this is where having that review count and the rating sum is important. And then your average rating is simply just the sum over the count. All right. How do we model many to many relationships, right? For this, I'll go to product inventory. So when you're shopping for your products and you say, okay, I want to purchase this now and I want to go and look at where it's available. So is it available at any stores near me or even in the case of, you know, a totally digital e-commerce store, there might be several different places that sell this product and they might have different prices. So you might want to go with the lowest price or maybe you want it used or something like that. Let's look at what that looks like. So in our application, products and stores are actually in a many to many relationship. And what that means is products can be sold at many stores and stores sell multiple products. So what we have there is you have a connection table, a junction table, a join table, something, you know, in a traditional um, RDBMS, you have what's called a join table. And this connects your products and your stores, and it may have some edge data on it, like the price and the quantity. In a completely normalized data set, you would only store the necessary edge data. So here we have the store ID, the product ID, so we can always connect them. And then we have the quantity and the price. 
These two fields are only applicable to the inventory. They're not applicable to the store or the product, so they only exist at the edge. In the embedded pattern, since we're using Redis JSON, we might also, to minimize queries, store the name, the contact, the address, so you can make one query and understand, does the store have this product? And if it does, where's the store? Um, you know, how far away is it? And can I call them and reserve it? Or, you know, so on and so forth. So that's how we model many to many relationships. So this is the schema for our final application data model. And you know, this is an entity diagram, very similar to what you might see in a relational database, but something you'll notice in here is, you know, in our inventory, we actually have a nested address. Uh, same with the store and the, the store has a nested address. These are things you can't model. You can model in SQL as separate entities, but you can't model them as embedded entities. And then we have, you know, in our product details, we have our list of images and then we have our review count and our rating sum. Let's look at what this, using Redis own Python, what this might look like. So over on the left, I have just a sample schema. It's, you know, classes set up with embedded JSON model and the JSON model, and then a few fields are indexed. And then on the right, I have our queries. If you remember back to the beginning, we had three big questions we needed to answer. We wanted to be able to get products and product details. And to do that with Redis own Python, you just use your product model and you find all of them. We wanted to be able to get stores that have products in stock. To do that, we can look at inventory. So if you remember, we'll go back to the inventory. The inventory is storing enough information so that you can understand the store name, the address, the contact info, the quantity and the price. So we can actually fulfill the get stores that have products in stock by making an inventory query where the product IDs match and the quantity is greater than zero. And then getting reviews for a product is as simple as going to the review and getting all of them based on filtering for a product ID. And then getting reviews for a product is as simple as going to the review and getting all of them based on filtering for a product ID. Right, so here's the code that you can play around with that also has some scripts to generate data and look into how things work with Redis own Python. I'll also give you the link to the GitHub repo in the description down below. Also let me know what else you want me to cover in future videos. So that's it for this Redis own Python lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a bit different than what I usually do on the channel. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you found this video beneficial, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll be seeing you then.